Joining me today on the Capitol Show, uh, Afghan National Army Special Operations uh, Command Commanding General, Farid Ahmadi, you are most welcome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my first question is, if we're going to go back about the American withdrawal from Afghanistan, in your opinion, what were the military, uh, the military mistakes that were made? Uh, this is a long uh, uh, story uh, to uh, to say in, in a very short uh, uh, um, uh, sentence. It's a more uh, strategic uh, uh, policy matter uh, failure uh, for international community and particularly for the U.S. But from military perspective, it's uh, uh, 20 years uh, of uh, blood and treasure invested by international community in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. uh, which built the national institutions uh, like uh, Afghan National uh, Security and Defense Forces uh, was a, a historical uh, a milestones and uh, a national uh, a backbone uh, for the country. Uh, but in the past 20 years, uh, uh, policy matter uh, mistakes, uh, uh, leadership uh, uh, failure uh, uh, for both sides and the Afghan uh, politicians uh, failed and also uh, international um, um, lack of international commitment mm -hmm. and resolve uh, to address the key core issues of uh, fighting uh, international terrorism and um, uh, building a democratic uh, uh, nation. Yeah, how do you feel like now, General, the results? Yeah, and we have again uh, Taliban in power. Uh, um, maybe uh, the Qaeda now uh, have a safe haven in Afghanistan. Um, how do you see the situation? Um, unfortunately, after 20 years of uh, joint sacrifices by uh, Afghans, and also international uh, coalition forces. Uh, we again, uh, after 20 years, the efforts of international community coalition forces handed over back by Doha agreement, by Doha deal, uh, the Republic of Afghanistan uh, replaced uh, by, by Taliban. Uh, right now, Afghanistan is a safe haven for 25 terrorist groups who were fighting in the past 20 years alongside uh, Taliban. Uh, out of 96 terrorist groups worldwide operating, 25 of them currently, including Al-Qaeda, Daesh, uh, they are uh, inside Afghanistan. And interestingly, they are using the U.S. military bases and NATO military bases inside Afghanistan for their training uh, efforts of uh, Mm -hmm. training the uh, international terrorists. Uh, uh, this is a big challenge. Uh, how do you see, General, now the future or the fate of the Afghan commanders? Uh, have they become mercenaries uh, all over the world that, that can be hired? Um, the, uh, the Afghan national army, and uh, they were betrayed, uh, first of all, by their president, uh, Mr. Ghani, the commander-in-chief and his inner circle uh, nationally. And also they were abandoned by, uh, by Americans and uh, NATO allies uh, who were uh, fighting together against uh, a common uh, enemy, which was international terrorism. Right now they are in despair. They are subjected uh, to Taliban uh, uh, brutal uh, retaliations and revenge attacks. Uh, thousands of them were killed and, uh, and in prison right now under the Taliban control, and, uh, and thousands of them fled the, uh, the country. Uh, yes, some of the reports are uh, correct that they are uh, recruited uh, by, uh, uh, by um, uh, intelligence services and some of uh, uh, security companies, uh, private security companies, and they are fighting in both sides of Ukraine uh, war. But also hundreds of them or thousands of them, as I was contact contacted with them, yeah. they they refused to refuse to join for uh, for uh, uh, for uh, 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 for foreigner uh, objectives to fight in foreign country, and they are uh, working and uh, they they have. 
they lost uh, hope, they lost careers, they lost jobs, they had they lost hope for the future, and they were abandoned and betrayed by their political leaders and by uh, by their strategic partners, uh, which is uh, NATO allies. Uh, what about the role of uh, the Gulf states? For example, the United Arab Emirates, uh, uh, there was a partnership, military partnership uh, and cooperation. Uh, can you tell us some stories about uh, uh, how much UAE is concerned about the future of Afghanistan? Um, Arab states, especially particularly the UAE, uh, work uh, uh, p- uh, particularly with the uh, Afghan National Army command and, uh, um, uh, commandos and special forces. When I when I was commanding uh, Second Special Operation Brigade in the west of Afghanistan and Herat, Shindan, UAE partners uh, were uh, with with us, and also in Kabul when we, when I was uh, uh, commanding the uh, Anasak and the Afghan National Army. Uh, came, um, uh, special Operations Command, uh, UAE, uh, alongside with the U.S. Special Forces, France, and others. Uh, they worked very closely. Uh, they helped training. Uh, they helped uh, some equipment. And also we had some um, uh, joint small tactics uh, uh, operations. Um, uh, it was uh, significant uh, uh, help and assistance. Uh, so uh, the experience, uh, the, uh, the Afghan soldiers, they have they are unique. Uh, the bravery, uh, the commitment, and heroism of Afghan National Army and Afghan National Police and uh, NDSF soldiers, uh, they proved, uh, uh, they were proved uh, and, and uh, defending their country and their, and their, uh, and their people. So UE also played a, 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 a positive role uh, in, the, in the framework of coalition forces and the training of uh, commandos and special forces. Maybe also the participation in the withdrawal to uh, um, achieve a uh, safe withdrawal during the crisis when uh, Taliban uh, overthrew the power. Uh, my question is, can you recall the humanitarian uh, assistance from UAE? Uh, can you tell us about uh, this matter? Um, uh, right now, humanitarian assistance uh, uh, to the Afghan people uh, uh, is is a huge uh, problem, and uh, and uh, and um, there is uh, no clarity because uh, Taliban controls Afghanistan as a dominant force, and mainly uh, humanitarian assistance uh, going to the Taliban families and to Taliban uh, fighters, um, as um, um, as the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, um, 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 uh, uh, foreign ministers, they had a briefing to the Congress that they are not sure that all these humanitarian assistance and uh, money going to the right people of Afghanistan. So uh, the humanitarian disasters and the economic failure uh, is also your international community and the Taliban. They are using the dire situation of Afghan people against each other. So mm-hmm. all this help, we are not sure. It's not getting to the people of Afghanistan uh, who are in need. One of the biggest investment in Afghanistan uh, during the former governments uh, was from Saudi Arabia. What is the fate of this investment and how Saudi Arabia can help to solve the economic crisis there? Um, Saudi Arabia, uh, especially after the uh, uh, Mohammed bin, Sultan, uh, uh, bin, uh, bin Salman uh, raised uh, uh, to the power. I think there is uh, uh, high expectations uh, in the Muslim world and especially in Afghanistan that Saudis can play a more positive, uh, uh, not only economic, but also political uh, uh, influence over, t- over the Taliban uh, because of the relationship Taliban used to have with with Saudis, with the UEs, and with Qataris, with other um, uh, Gulf states. Uh, but unfortunately, Taliban uh, uh, in power, they don't listen uh, to Saudis, they don't listen uh, to to international community. Uh, otherwise, uh, the, that harmony, harmony and uh, almost open society that uh, Saudis enjoys, 
uh, Afghanistan is right now under Taliban uh, experienced the darkest uh, um, history uh, uh, of uh, uh, of civilization, especially for the woman. It's a uh, it's a yeah. uh, full scale and uh, own woman apartheid uh, under the Taliban. Uh, what do you? think about who can stand in front of Taliban right now. We know that Afghanistan have a diverse um, uh, structure, races and uh, tribes. Is there any hope to have uh, many forces to face Taliban uh, power? Um, in the past two years, uh, there is uh, national resistance forces uh, uh, leading by uh, uh, Ahmad Masood, a young uh, uh, a young uh, uh, Tajik leader, uh, who is the son of former uh, national hero Ahmad Shah Massoud, uh, the uh, the great warrior against the uh, Soviets, uh, and also in the first resistance he, he fought out uh, against Taliban. So uh, there are resistance, pocket of resistance in the north and even in the Kabul. According to intelligence reports, currently Taliban are losing between five to nine fighters on daily basis. Mm -hmm. So in the past uh, uh, two, almost two years, Taliban lost 4,000 uh, fighters in the, in the fight against the uh, resistance, uh, um, uh, which is currently going on against them. But, but the Taliban has uh, more power because uh, uh, billion of dollars, equ NATO equipment, weapons, uh, aircrafts, Black Hawks, um, and uh, like uh, um, um, uh, ISR platforms like PC-12, Scan Eagles, all these U.S. equipment left over uh, for Taliban. They are using these equipment, NATO equipment, to uh, suppress women, uh, to kill and uh, uh, to kill former NDSF uh, soldiers and also their political pre uh, pol political opponents. Almost tw according to the uh, Ministry of Interior Affairs of Taliban, 22,000 young uh, people, political prisoners uh, under the Taliban uh, uh, jails. So this is a, a tragedy which there is no media, there is no freedom of speech, there is no media in Afghanistan, to, no, there is no international um, uh, monitor, uh, monitors or human rights commission or human, UN human rights so, uh, so this is a really gender apartheid and a very dire situation in Afghanistan. General Ahmadi, uh, 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 do you uh, are you afraid from a, an access to a coup between Iran uh, and te a terrorist uh, access between Iran and Taliban? Uh, there is uh, 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 one thing is proved that uh, uh, regional powers, including Iran and uh, global powers, including U United States, they are using and dealing with Taliban directly, openly, and also secretly. So two years, Taliban talked with the US in Doha, uh, and also uh, 20 years, 28 years, Taliban were fighting either in power or outside the power. Uh, and also two, two years now, they are in power. There is no change in ideology of Taliban. There is no change in behavior and in policy of Taliban. Taliban uh, is still, uh, they don't listen to international community. They don't obey Doha deal. Uh, they have keep connections and relationship with Al-Qaeda, with terrorist uh, groups. Uh, many regional terrorist groups uh, from Central Asia, from China, from TTP of Pakistan, they are all currently in Afghanistan, and those NATO American weapon systems and millions of rounds of ammunition were what shared is, by the, the role of Iran. And ha, can Iran use the Taliban as an ally? Uh, uh, it, um, uh, in a short term, uh, yes. They, in the past two years, they developed relationship and also in the past 20 years uh, Taliban smartly used uh, uh, Taliban against American to kill Americans to to force American out of Afghanistan uh, but this is a tactical relationship and short term relationship but in the long strategic term uh, Iran cannot be uh, 
uh, allied with Taliban. Any time in future, uh, you, we will witness a clash between Taliban and uh, Iranian. How can you see the future of Afghanistan? Give us your vision. What is in, in conclusion? Do you see any solution, any hope to, to end this uh, situation? Uh, there is a hope and there is a solution, but the Taliban is the main obstacle uh, uh, for peace and stability. Uh, Taliban, very arrogant. They think that they defeated America and they are in power. They don't believe in inclusive government. They don't respect the rights of other ethnic groups. There are over 30 ethnic groups in Afghanistan, four major there, ethnic groups. Is there any anything in common between them uh, religiously and the Muslim Brotherhood? Uh, yes, that's the ideology. They mm. share the same ideology. So Daesh, Daesh, ISIS, Taliban, they share, they share the same ideology. The only struggle between Daesh and Taliban, it's about power and influence. Mm. So uh, so currently, four major ethnic groups uh, they are uh, uh, they, they they try to be inclusive in, uh, uh, in Afghanistan. As I told, there are over thirty uh, ethnic groups, but four major groups like Tajik, uh, Hazaras, Pashtuns, and Uzbeks. Currently, a dominant group of Taliban uh, 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 representing. Only one ethnic group uh, and uh, tries to subjugate others. Uh, it exacerbates the tensions and violence between other ethnic groups. So I see the future of Afghanistan uh, under the Taliban. Uh, it's leading to the to the civil war, which mm. uh, Tajiks, Hazaras, and Pushtuns will open more resistance and armed struggle fronts against Taliban. And then regional powers and international powers and international community, they must uh, prevent this before uh, uh, going to the civil war. They must force Taliban to sit on negotiating table and, and create and uh, to go to the election. If they are they are if they are powerful and they are the majority, they can win the uh, hearts and minds of people by laying down their weapons. Right now, the only militia on warlords group it's a taliban uh -huh. uh, this is very bad thank you for this briefing uh, lieutenant general uh, uh, farid ahmadi i'm so glad to have you thank you for your time and hopefully we'll do more interviews later on thank you thank you maria hey maria maluf here please click to like and subscribe to maria maluf tv youtube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis you will not get it anywhere else